let's start, let's just go over some accolades from this year. A 30-7 and seven record, first 31 seasons since Barry joined Division III, 14-0 in the SAA, perfect league record, first team to ever do that, an SAA Conference Championship, SAA Coach of the Year, Hannah Kate Thompson, SAA Player of the Year, three All-Americans, a ton of records I could talk forever. What has this season been like for you and your program having so, so much success this year? Yeah, I, I think it really started last January when the rising seniors at the time were thinking about the coming fall and, and what we could be doing as a team to make sure the season was special and um, convincing the underclassmen to really buy into this idea of we need to be more, you know, better volleyball players, better teammates, and, and, and in turn have the outcome that we want. So I think, you know, starting last January, we just focused on the process and what we need to do to have a great season, and then all those kinds of things come from focusing on the process. Looking back at the start of the year, what's the mindset behind the scheduling? Because you, you come out at the start of the season and you go to two really, really strong tournaments against some fantastic teams, and you come out of that stretch five and three. So what's the mindset behind the start of the year, you get right into the thick of it and go into some really strong out-of-conference competition? Yeah, I think every year when I'm looking at scheduling, my mindset is if we want to be a top team, if we want to be a contender every year for conference titles and beyond, you've got to play the best teams. And whether that means you go 0-8 or 5-3, and 3, I think it's worth it. I think you can grow a lot from it and uh, figure out what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And so those kinds of trips and those early tournaments are super important for us to kind of gauge where we're at and um, also just grow from it and have those experiences. I think ultimately you become more comfortable against the top teams and the, those big games you've played in them before. You know, blocking has really been a focus all this year and all last year, um, led by Hannah Billiard and Carson Van Campen. But do you think that our success at the net is a product of their talent and their athleticism, or do you think it's more of a, of a coaching style and kind of what you guys put into practice that leads to this team having so much success at the net? Yeah, I think that's one of the things when you have an athlete come in from high school and club that it's not necessarily taught in youth volleyball very often. It's just not something of importance. You're learning some of those basic necessary skills. And so when we get athletes and um, stress to them the importance of blocking and how that can help you defensively and, and in turn offensively, um, it is something that we really focus on every single day in practice. Um, I think when you have a competitive team that buys into what you're doing and, and wants to get better, they kind of push each other. And um, yeah, so it's a combination, I think, of both, of course, their athleticism, but um, also we're focusing a lot in practice. I want to go back to the first time that we played Emory back in October. Um, to me, that, that was just one of those nights that felt different. Um, it was the pink out game, honoring Jordan's sister. Barry had just lost a student athlete literally hours before you guys take the court. You go on to beat Emory 3-0 to zero for the first time in program history, never beaten that team before. How special was that night for you and the team to, in front of 600, 700 fans, go out and have that kind of performance on a night like that? I think it was so much more than just a win for us. It was this hump that we've been trying to get over physically, um, mentally, our confidence. We had never been able to accomplish something like that. And so it was the affirmation that we needed that we can do this if we stick to the process again and, and you get the outcome that you want. I think with everything that went on with Jordan's family this year and even Barry as a community that day, I think it was that much more special that we were able to do that and do it at home in front of our entire community and, and parents and, and all that. So. Looking at regionals, you, uh, you get a really good hand over team, you go five with them, you down Hanover, you move on to the regional semifinals against Covenant, and you get behind 0-2 and then complete just a simply amazing reverse sweep over Covenant to go to the regional finals for the first time in program history. What was regionals like, first of all, and, and when you're down 0-2 and you're heading into that third set against Covenant, what's going through your head as a coach and what do you think was going through the players' minds as well? Yeah, I mean, to kind of backtrack, there wasn't a single player on our, our roster that had been to an NCAA regional having earned a conference title in the automatic bid. So this was a very inexperienced team when it came to postseason and what that looked like and the pressures and um, you know the whole thing, the atmosphere, all that, that was very um, foreign to this group. Um, 
but I think that was kind of an advantage for us too is, is you don't have that added pressure maybe necessarily. You don't, you don't really know what's at stake because you've never been there. Um, so yeah, we, we drew Hanover. We knew they were a similar matchup to us and one of the top blocking teams. Um, I thought we jumped out of the gun really strong, really confident, you know, and, and then maybe got a little bit complacent or um, maybe let doubt or fear creep in just a hair. So I was proud of them for turning it around and obviously pulling through. And, and we knew that next match was either going to be Birmingham Southern or Covenant. And both teams we had faced before, both teams really challenged us in different ways. And so um, thankfully it was, it was Covenant and we got a second chance at them, a team that had previously beaten us. And um, yeah, jumping out 0-2 was a little bit scary, but um, we had a few individuals really step up and, and bring that spark and that confidence that we so needed and that we lacked the first time we played them. And so, yeah, I think it was a, a special night in many ways, but I was really, really proud of them. You move on to the regional finals against Emory, and it, it kind of just felt like Emory wasn't a team that was going to be beat at home that night. It didn't matter who, was, who they were lining up against. They played very well that evening. Um, but it's the first time that, like you said, that an experienced team in terms of postseason, first time that we'd ever been in the regional finals, just an insane season behind you. Do you feel like that uh, was an appropriate ending to the year going to the regional finals against Emory in their house? Yeah, I think we, uh, I think Elizabeth Ragland said this in her post game interview. We just were really thankful to be there. We wanted to play with a lot of joy, play for our seniors, kind of leave it all out on the floor. I, I think physically there's a lot of things we probably could have done better that night, and I think a lot of things went right for Emory. Um, but that's an experienced Emory team, a program that constantly is in that position and, and knows what that feels like. And so for us, it was new, like I mentioned. And so I'm hoping that we can build on that and, and make it back. Here in just two seasons as a head coach at Berry, um, 53 and 17 record, 24 and 4 in SAA play. You take over for just a legendary coach in Micah Robinson, and you kind of continue her legacy of success in these past two years. What do you attribute that to, and then how do you keep it going? I'm hoping it's buy-in. You know, I have an amazing staff that constantly is helping us think of new ways to get better, and you know, giving in every sense of the word to the program. I think there's buy-in from our players, from the ones that we bring in and recruit, and we set those expectations to our, our leaders every year, and it's fun to see um, freshmen become sophomores and sophomores become juniors and, and develop their leadership skills. Um, so I'm hoping it's just buy-in and, and this belief that we can be successful and wanting more and putting in the work and being willing to build a program to that level. What does Berry College Volleyball have in store for 2018? 2018, we have an incredible group of 13 returners, seven seniors. Um, I am so excited for them and, and making this year special for them in their own way um, and not thinking about the past or the past successes, but building on the potential and again, focusing on the process. We have um, five you know, really, really talented incoming freshmen from all over the country and I'm looking forward to see them push those returners and and make Berry Volleyball kind of their own too and, and so yeah our, our schedule is loaded again of course and I'm looking forward to being challenged early on and, and seeing kind of where we stand and, and what we can build on but yeah it's a new team it's a new group and hopefully we can um, continue to be successful and focus on the process.